Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Bianca Collins. I'm the Curator of Public Programs for the Fowler Museum at UCLA. Thank you for joining us today or tonight, depending on where it is you're tuning in from around the world. The Fowler is proud to present today's program, Sam Cook on the new Aboriginal Art Center experience as part of the Fowler's Lunch and Learn series. We're so pleased that you've joined us to chew on some sustenance and feed your mind and soul. An Aboriginal Australian arts, entertainment, and tech professional now based in the US, Sam Cook is a cross art form practitioner, educator, arts manager, and leader in Indigenous arts. Today, we are honored to be welcoming Cook, who will share her work supporting increased access to international markets for Aboriginal artists, including the recent launch of Virtual Gidangun, the new Aboriginal Art Center experience. This new platform enables Aboriginal artists from nine traditional owner groups in the far north of Australia to maintain their, auto their autonomy and participate in the global economy while their borders with the outside world are restricted. Sam Cook is a retired musician, playwright, writer, visual artist, graphic designer, and head of the KMBA Creative Agency. A recipient of the UK Arts Council Fellowship in 07 and 2011, she was the founding Aboriginal columnist for Arts Hub and Tracker, founder of Australia's Black History Month, hashtag SOS Black Australia, and Festivillion, and co-founder of Culture. Cook is currently a member of the First Nations Independent Arts Alliance, Artivist Entertainment, International Association of Blacks in Dance, and Australians in Music. She is also launching the United Stages Collective, the first Aboriginal Australian-led creative ensemble in the US. Before we get going, just two quick technical bits of housekeeping. Once the screen sharing begins, I encourage you to click view options and then select side by side mode so the video feed doesn't cover any of the presentation. And if you have any questions during our program, please submit them through the Q&A function found at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You can submit and upvote entries that you would like to be considered to be answered at the end of the program. All right, that's all from me. Over to you, Sam. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm just about to screen share. So I want to kind of take you through a bit of a journey of um, the Gidigan experience um, and what really led to uh, this innovation around Aboriginal art centres in, uh, in Australia. So welcome, everyone, to Virtual Gidigan. Uh, as you've heard, um, I too would also like to acknowledge that the Tongva, Keech and San Gabrielino and neighbouring nations of Turtle Island uh, exist in their own sovereignty. And I do pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Uh, as you've heard, uh, I was the founder of Black History Month um, and a number of uh, arts, tech and entertainment uh, elements and also the winner of the uh, National NAIDOC Aboriginal Youth of the Year in 1999, which is uh, quite some time ago, uh, obviously grown a little bit up since then, but I also wanted to just share with you um, where I come from. So Nigana country is dry, it's salt water. It's uh, also um, a really important part of uh, the Northwest of Western Australia in terms of its history and its story. Uh, it was colonized only 132 years ago, so it's still very strong. And I walk uh, with my ancestors uh, who are present today and who you can see in the images above. And I'm part of over 800 Aboriginal nations because to Australia, um, well, to Aboriginal Australia, Australia is not one country. Australia is over 800 countries and we each have our own distinct cultures and our law and our customs. Uh, and also our own trading um, relationships amongst ourselves. So my first relationship with Girigan began in uh, 2017. I was up in um, far north Queensland, which is the complete other side of uh, my nation, uh, being in the northwest of Western Australia. And we were sort of looking at ways in which we can start to tell one of the most hidden um, and powerful stories of the Aboriginal arts movements, and that is rainforest cultures. Uh, not too much is known uh, to the world. And, you know, this was for us an opportunity to start to tell that story, but do it in a way that uh, connected everyone digitally, but also through uh, the lens of cultural practitioner. And I say that, so in 2017, I did an audit and found that out of the 
uh, Indigenous Art Centre Alliance, which is known as IACA, um, that Gitigan Art Centre was uh, number 12 out of 14 uh, of the art centres in terms of their social media presence and their online presence. Um, while that sounds like they weren't the worst, it was only because the other two didn't have websites or any social media. So what we intended to do was take the physical brick and mortar story and connect it to the World Wide Web in a way which uh, supported the, the reason of being for Gittigan, which is to support the Aboriginal artists, um, to support the community, and to be a part of the bigger story of the Gittigan Aboriginal Corporation uh, to which it is a part of. And also to address some of the uh, elements within uh, the community around role of Art Centre being a life force uh, for not only telling the story, but for economic uh, determinations and independence for our communities. And for Gittigan um, to elevate the rainforest narrative. And so this is what we're dealing with when we're talking about nine cultural groups. We're talking about such a vast uh, array of country. We're talking about the area which is known globally as the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, we're talking about inland hinterlands uh, and a really kind of rich, rich story that when you think about Australia, you tend not to think about this part of the world. And so that was a challenge um, for us to start to go, well, what is known globally of Aboriginal art? And Leonard Andy, one of the Jury traditional owners uh, in Gerrigan, had a really kind of important um, quote here, which is Aboriginal history has largely been built on dry country culture. And so when you do think of Aboriginal art, you're thinking of the dot paintings uh, from Central Australia uh, and having the potential to have visibility uh, beyond that is really what kind of struck the chord for us. But also the other elements that were really kind of critical in terms of the story of uh, Gittigan was about the autonomy. So in the Aboriginal arts uh, sector, uh, very few of the Aboriginal art centres themselves are managed and directed and led by Aboriginal people. And with Joanne Russo, the art centre manager, um, being the first ever Aboriginal appointee in that role, it was about looking at ways in which we could drive the narrative, but also create the story that interconnected us to the, the global footprint. And the global footprint for us is being the marketplace. It's also important because over 80% of cultural products available in, in shops around the world, as we've discovered, is fake art. And the fake art movements have been so pervasive in communities that they have destroyed the economic in, um, inroads for Aboriginal communities to thrive um, by telling their own arts. But it's also created uh, almost a fake cultural uh, platform where when people do think of Aboriginal art, they're looking at something that's actually not even from us. Um, often uh, it's from uh, Asia is where a lot of the products have come through. So, by telling the Gertigan story, we're looking at not only addressing, um, you know, the deficit of uh, autonomy and sovereignty, but we're also directly uh, squaring up against the fake art harms culture movement, which is um, something we stand by very strongly. So bringing Gertigan to the world um, meant that we would start to participate in a global footprint. Um, as you know, Australia is less than the population of the total state of California. Um, and from that, even though the buyer's market traditionally has been from within Australia, uh, we were looking at the way in which we could engage in a $12.4 billion market, uh, which is the global footprint. Um, but beyond that, the online sales footprint. But in doing that, not only sharing the rainforest cultural story, but centering artist and community. And as I mentioned, um, making it 100% Aboriginal led in vision and direction. So we started to build a brand online. What we wanted to do was create something that had a premium element about it. Uh, something that introduced um, really strong rainforest cultural figures. Uh, you'll see here the Bagul and the Jawan. And, um, tell that story 
uh, sell that story and make people see just how powerful rainforest culture is. Um, and we did that through the Shop Girigan brand. We also made it accessible in a new retail experience uh, for Aboriginal art centres. Uh, by doing it in a way in which it was very familiar to your online shopper and, uh, and buyer. So we made um, the visual presence uh, squared central because often if you look at the Aboriginal um, web presence, it tends to kind of get lost uh, as a tab uh, hidden behind, but we wanted to kind of put it front and centre and um, in do that, make it uncomplicated. We didn't stop there um, because obviously with COVID and the pandemic, um, restrictions around not only entry to Australia, but uh, to protect uh, elders in communities was something that was a very serious uh, situation. So what we did was we um, trained uh, the local uh, Gittigan staff to start to document uh, their own exhibitions. And we did that through a collaboration uh, in Arizona and through a technology that's often applied to real estate. And what we wanted to do was be able to walk through uh, the Gittigan Gallery uh, as if you were present and be able to kind of unearth stories, uh, buy products, um, you know, start to interact with staff in a, in a very different way that hadn't at that time been done uh, at the Aboriginal Arts Centre level. I put this here because um, we were actually a little bit ahead of where the uh, industry was uh, now sort of talking. Uh, we also saw the value of um, continuing the engagement with the uh, serious art collectors and buyers by having private viewing galleries. Uh, we established that in May 2020. And as you'll see, 2022, the conversation is really around the value of that. Uh, but again, it's also talking about the, the autonomy that we were uh, looking to create um, in the sense of where we position ourselves um, as direct uh, to community sales. And because we didn't want to stop there, we also uh, created an online television uh, station. We did that within the virtual uh, Gittigan footprint. Uh, and we did that for the, the simple reason is that a lot of the times the story is buried in archive. Um, and there's a lot of resources. There are a lot of potential to skill uh, the art centre managers and um, staff uh, up in filmmaking and start to really uh, visually tell the story of the Gittigan experience. Because we created all of uh, our online assets and were able to start to talk about ourselves in a really positive digital way, um, we were able to really successfully participate online uh, at virtual art fairs. Because of COVID, um, major uh, events such as DAF, the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair, um, and KIAF went online as virtual galleries. And we had the ability to be responsive and professionalise and link across our brand shop, Gurigan, and also direct to the website. So we found that the trend was that people would come, they would buy from the art fair, but they would also go to the website and um, also buy additional uh, artworks. And so the achievement, we came from a baseline of zero. So um, to achieve really significant uh, metrics in terms of online traffic, really told us that the world did want to engage in the Gittigan story. Um, we've consistently exceeded sales targets uh, during the pandemic, which um, was really important because as we know, there was no traffic uh, into art centers directly. So we were able to create that uh, virtually. And our site visitations we're pretty excited about uh, included Antarctica. Um, we have, uh, since the pandemic and beyond, been able to trade 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, um, and do that in a way that isn't invasive into Aboriginal uh, community custom and global situations and also some ceremony and uh, sorry business. So the, the store stays open, we can be responsive to that. Um, but because we've been a presence online, we've been able to attract some major uh, features. And one of them was Open Shop, uh, which had an audience base of 5.2 million shoppers. Um, 
and two Netflix features uh, as well. Gibbigan also was included in the Santa Barbara Australia Walkabout opening. And uh, last year, Art Centre Manager Joanne Russo was a finalist in Women in Digital. And uh, more importantly, all the skills that we've created through Virtual Gibbigan stay within the community itself. And uh, it is my role um, to phase myself out and uh, to do myself out of a job, if you will, uh, because my job is done when the community uh, is leading on their own uh, innovations in and around this space. Uh, if you're looking for the Gilliam Art Centre and Shop Gilliam, here's uh, the uh, links. And um, you can also just uh, find us pretty uh, simply by um, also coming through to my site, which is um, the KMBA Creative. Uh, so for, for us, um, telling the story of rainforest culture, uh, engaging in a marketplace that isn't necessarily unknown to Aboriginal people or re regionally based uh, Australians, because we've all sort of engaged in an online shopping interface uh, before it even existed. Uh, and by being able to take uh, the lead from a deficit of coming from behind to coming to the front of uh, innovation, uh, by being linked to Aboriginal um, professionals around the world who can then bring in the skills that aren't with necessarily within Australia uh, and link directly to community meant that we were able to create great um, gains and, and ground in the Aboriginal Arts Centre experience. Thank you so much, Sam. That was incredibly, incredibly enlightening to see all of the amazing work that you're doing. Um, thank you for sharing that with us today. We have some time to get into some questions. We've already got two submitted. And if anyone else has some questions, I encourage you to submit them through the Q&A portal found at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We're gonna start with um, Christine's question. Christine wonders if you can please talk more about the Bagu figures. Um, what are they? What are they made of? Okay, um, so the Bagu's, and uh, let's just pull that back up again because they're such a beautiful uh, story to be told with actually what they are. Um, let's see. Sorry. I'm seeing a bleak white, oh, here we go. Now we're back in action. Yeah. Let's come back to the Buggles, we'll do the television. So uh, traditionally, um, Buggle uh, has been uh, related to carrying fire. And the shape of the Buggle with the, the circular holes is um, to use the, the Juman, which is the sticks, to create fire. So it is um, the way in which rainforest cultures were able to carry um, fire and travel through country. Uh, so in a contemporary setting, the bugle has uh, been rendered in ceramics uh, as well as traditional wood buggles. And these are um, all unique. Each one has its own uh, personality. So that's the, uh, the idea of find your bugle because they do definitely speak to you individually. Um, but they have had such a prolific uh, provenance to rainforest culture and they're only found in this region which makes it a really exciting uh, story to tell to the world um, because nobody necessarily outside of that region has had a lot of exposure to the bagu as an Aboriginal um, artifact uh, but also um, in this rainforest cultural uh, community they also have traditional sword making and that's something that's uh, very unique to that region as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so Cindy wonders if you're aware of any tour companies that offer tours to the Aboriginal art centers, um, especially like around the Darwin area. Um, yeah, she says that someday she hopes to be able to come visit them. Yeah, so there are some tours, but a lot of uh, the art centers are uh, are open. So if you go to Peak Bodies, for example, uh, IACA and Desert uh, and Anchor 
they have maps uh, of where the art centres exist and then it is by negotiation because you've got the impact of seasonal uh, issues, you've got the impact of uh, closure because of cultural reasons and um, it's about, you know, spending time and, and, and being present uh, and being flexible, I think, when you're engaging in those uh, regional tours. So the virtual uh, Gittigan Gallery uh, is something that we're building on uh, to enable you to go visit the gallery um, before you even come. And we found that a lot of people have been uh, interacting in that space and then wanting to come and physically see it. Uh, so by being able to kind of bridge the virtual as well as the physical, it has opened up a whole uh, other element of engagement that we weren't seeing necessarily um, in terms of Aboriginal cultural tourism and art centre engagement. Yes, and given the success of the work that you've been doing with Virtual Gideon, is there any other art centre that has, I mean, are you going to work with any art centres coming up to help create similar platforms for them? Is there anything on the horizon in this format? Yeah, so we are talking to other art centres, um, engaging in the peak uh, body conversations, because what's important to us is that these skills are shared across uh, communities. And, and that really is around, um, you know, the autonomy piece uh, by being able to address the issue of our dollar doesn't touch our remote communities um, in the way in which it should. And so when you're looking at situations where our communities are still in failure to thrive situations, we really want to create economic uh, streams of impactful um, engagement so that it's not something that is uh, removed from the community, it's embedded into the community. Uh, it's not a like a, a lifelong consultancy, it's about handing those skills to our Aboriginal community members to drive and ideate um, in the tech world because I know our uh, community members are very big minded and very, um, you know, have a lot of dwell time to be able to grapple with technology in a way in which we haven't even imagined as yet. So um, that's a big commitment to really start to rev revolutionize uh, the space, but do it from an Aboriginal uh, led perspective uh, in, in the way in which we do it. Mm -hmm. And um... We have a follow-up question um, from Cindy um, and wondering if you can share more about the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair, um, when it usually occurs, um, about how many artists participate, and I would be, I would love to know also like what percentage of them come from art centres. Yeah, so the majority art centres, uh, for the last couple of years, it's been um, a virtual uh, gathering, and that's obviously because of the impact of COVID. Uh, and in that format, it has actually been quite successful as well. I believe, um, and again, it's, it's about maybe going to their website to see if they are gonna open physically. Um, but last year they had over 70 art centers from around um, the region and also far North Queensland. So it's a great uh, way to immerse yourself in, in Aboriginal art buying directly from the art centres. Uh, similarly with uh, KIAF, which is the Cairns Indigenous Arts Fair, which is really centred on um, Queensland uh, and far north Queensland. So that's an opportunity to have direct engagement while you're uh, maybe planning your, your travel um, to then be able to engage directly with the art centres in one kind of critical mass. Um, and Tarnandi in South Australia is another one, which is more of a national footprint. Um, these, these happen quite regularly, uh, Desert Mob as well uh, in Central Australia. Um, and they also have a program that goes beyond the physical uh, buying, it's, it's cultural performances and um, other sort of elements, um, film screenings and uh, book launches and all sorts of things. Thank you so much for sharing all of this information with us today, Sam. And Again, thank you for um, telling us so much about this important work that you're doing with Aboriginal Australian artists. And it's very exciting for folks like me and folks in our audience who would love to collect some Aboriginal Australian work and can't get to Australia in the immediate. Um, so thank you for being our guest today. No problem. Thanks for having me.
And thank you to everyone who joined us. This program has been recorded and will be available on our Facebook in the immediate. And in a few days, it will be uploaded to our Instagram and to the Fowler website for you to revisit and share as you wish. We hope that you'll join us again for our next program. You can find information on the closing slide. In the meantime, have a great day. See you next time. Bye.